So look, um, uh, uh, let me start off by uh, uh, acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we are meeting today for this uh, nice event, uh, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay our respects to their elders past and present. I'm Warwick Anderson. Um, I used to be a researcher, now I work in Canberra, uh, so uh, uh, I head up um, something called the National Health and Medical Research Council, which is a very long name and everybody will say NHMRC from now. Um, and we uh, are very privileged to um, be able to uh, support outstanding researchers and scientists and uh, 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 health practitioners around the country as they attack uh, through research and through science all the, uh, all the health problems that we face as people here in Australia and around the world. So um, to the Minister for Health, uh, the Honourable Tanya Plibersek, uh, my boss, um, uh, <laughs> Andrew uh, Fielding, um, where is Andrew? Oh, here in front of me. Um, uh, our school Education Director, uh, Judy Kelly, Judy, uh, uh, the, it says overall college principals. Sounds like that's your uniform, overalls. But uh, uh, Sydney Secondary College, uh, Sharon Roberts, uh, principal, who we met earlier um, uh, here on the Black uh, Wattle Bay uh, campus. Welcome to all of you as, uh, as students. Um, all of us up here used to be, in my case it's many decades ago, but uh, um, uh, it was as a secondary uh, a school student that uh, science turned me on and uh, I've had a great uh, life and career through, uh, through being involved in science over that period of time. Um, we're very proud uh, today that the Minister will launch uh, this uh, little booklet we call uh, Ten of the Best, Ten of the Best. There are lots of, uh, of the best, but these have been selected through a peer review process as uh, describing uh, the outcomes of research funded uh, through the NHMRC by government uh, as achieving uh, um, great outcomes that will make a difference uh, for the future. Um, peer review, as you've probably been hearing about, it's usually brought up in the uh, context of climate change and what's peer reviewed and what's not. What that really means is that other experts who understand the science uh, judge each other's work. In fact, it's the way science works uh, overall, both in terms of giving people grants for research funding, but also uh, when the research is finished and publications occur. Um, we're very grateful to uh, the, uh, the Secondary College for being able to launch this here today. We're also very grateful that uh, the Minister for Health uh, uh, um, agreed to do this, and so I now call on her to launch the grant. Thank you, Kat. Um, Warwick, thank you so much for that introduction, and I want to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land that we're meeting on today, uh, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Um, I want to uh, pay particular tribute to Professor Warwick Anderson, who's the C CEO of the NH and MRC, OK? Um, Warwick just does a marvellous job of, uh, of really setting the direction for research in this country, and it's very exciting to have him here with us today. We've also got Tony Kingdon, the NH and MRC General Manager, Andrew Fielding, the Acting School Education Director the, from the New South Wales Department of Education and Communities, um, Judy Kelly, uh, who you all know, of course, and Sharon Roberts, who I am just meeting for the first time. Welcome to Blackwaddle. I'm sure we'll see a lot of each other over the years. Um, and Tracy Lewis, the Head Science Teacher from Sydney Secondary College, Blackwaddle. Uh, it's wonderful to have a science teacher who's able to be so excited about her subject that she's going to bring all of you together to meet some of the best minds in Australia and you have the opportunity of interrogating them. So um, I'm not going to talk too long because what I'd really like to do is for us to hear from our scientists today and what I really want to do is give you the opportunity of hearing from them. Um, science and medical research is just a... Uh, 
terrific, exciting uh, area to be involved in. And by looking at this 10 of the best, you see the sort of opportunities that you have if you pursue a career in science or in medical research. Oh, my mum always rings when I'm speaking. It's just not right, is it? <laughs> I'm just going to ignore that one. Um, the, you'll see the sort of marvellous opportunities that you have. And, you know, uh, when you, you look back on some of the great scientific discoveries that Australians have made and the way they've changed the world, um, you can be very proud of our history of innovation. In 1945, Sir Howard Florey and his research team in Oxford uh, won a Nobel Prize for discovering the medicinal properties of penicillin. Now, uh, this... You cannot imagine a world where there's no antibiotics, where the smallest cut could have led to a terrible infection, uh, um, blood poisoning, amputation, pussy boils that needed to be lanced. Like the, a world before penicillin was a very different world. And from that discovery, all uh, so many other medical discoveries have flowed. More recently, um, we had uh, um, Ian Fraser, who um, took what he found about human papillomavirus and developed Gardasil. And uh, probably a lot of you girls in this room have had the Gardasil vaccination. The government's just put um, that vaccination on the immunisation schedule for boys as well. The fact that boys and girls will be vaccinated against human papillomavirus will save, or it depends what time frame you look at, but tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, over time, millions of lives because um, human papillomavirus leads to lesions which can lead to cancers which can kill people. That discovery um, will save millions of lives, another terrific um, Australian discovery. But do you know what? The thing that I want to say to you is um, about science is that, uh, and I don't know if my friends up here will agree with me, but it is a little bit like a soccer team. You get the, the, the big striker is the person that gets, uh, you know, the moment of fame as the goal goes into the net. But you can't get that goal unless you've got all of the people who've been setting you up to put the ball into the net. And no scientific discovery happens in a vacuum. In fact, I think we'll probably talk a little bit today about collaboration and the fact that every little bit of knowledge, the, um, the discovery of the Higgs boson not so long ago, uh, this, this incredible um, uh, insight into what makes the universe tick, what makes up all of us, has been uh, the work of generations of scientists um, theorising that there must be, there must be this little particle that exists and um, how are we going to find it? Because this is the thing that explains how everything else fits together. Um, it doesn't happen in isolation. It doesn't happen in a one-off go. It happens because of the effort and thoughtfulness and intellect and hard work and application of many, many people. So... With no further ado, I'd like to um, maybe introduce some of our scientists. So R Ramona will do that. Great. Okay, come on up. I'm going to stay here. Thank you very much, Minister. And um, I've just come from Geneva, from the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, on the, on the trail of the Higgs boson particle. So um, it is very exciting. And, and I, I'm just uh, Ramona Kovar is my name, and I... Uh, did uh, science at school and science at university and I thought I was going to be a researcher once but I discovered that I was better at telling the stories of what people do rather than having the kind of mindset to uh, doggedly go after a an idea. And, and Minister, I know that you were a gifted humanities student and, and you did public policy and I think you were... <laughs> d didn't you top your... your, your well, yes, you did. <laughs> So, just the first question to you, though. I mean, what, what, what do you think of when you think about the kind of dogged mind that, that researchers must, must have? Look, there's this great, a great quote somewhere about um, any idiot can handle a crisis. It's day-to-day -day life that takes real talent. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really what I think about scientists. I think that the, um, the application required to get up every day and work... Uh, on the thing that excites you, knowing that the goal might be there tomorrow or it might not be there for five years or it might not be there for ten years or it might be someone completely different that takes your life's work and puts that twist on it 
that makes the final discovery. I think that takes such um, courage and application. I think it's I think it's wonderful that people do it, and and I'm very grateful because. Ramona, I think I'm a bit like you. I've got a bit of a short attention span. I'm very pleased that there are other people <laughs> who have got that doggedness.